All right, guys, it's been quite a while since I've given you an update on my property, but also, remember, we got hit with a tornado back in April, and a lot of stuff got destroyed, including Flair's barn, my chicken coop, and greenhouse. My fence got bent a little bit, but I'm gonna take you through and show you an update. It's been seven months, believe it. Can you believe that? Seven months, time is flying. So I'm gonna take you a tour through the property, show you what we've added, and what are a few jobs that yet to be done, and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of the barn I'm building. All right, so this is the entrance to the property. Remember, I had those logs, they're all oak. They're 12 by 12 inch. There's a 20 footer and there's a couple of 16s, 12s and 10s. Anyway, all those have to be put in here and hopefully the guys that are on site right now with the crane working on the barn can help me install these. When I put these in, I get in a lot of complaints from truck drivers because it's like 15 and a half feet wide. I was trying for 16 or wider. Now they're telling me I should have went 18 to 20, but I was thinking about the size of a gate, not a gate that goes one way, I could do that. I'd like to see a gate that opens up like this. So I didn't know what kind of weight they needed, but I have these steel columns. These got installed just yesterday. I had them installed right here, which narrowed the opening. So I cut them off, threw them off to the side, and we just got these reset yesterday. So now I got to come up with an entrance gate idea. Maybe you can help me with that. I don't know if it needs to look like the fence or look something more interesting. Should you see through it or do you want to continue making it private? That's what I'd like to hear from you guys. That is yet to be done, but we finished. I added the fence all the way around because I didn't want to have to look at Flair's haunted house. Even though I got it painted, got it cleaned up, there was a tree on it. That thing's whipped back into shape and it's ready to go. And I think even rented the thing out. I have not met the people yet. This gives me a sense of arrival to my property. What I wanted is when friends and people pull up, the gates open up and that's the view you get to see. So I think I was successful in that. The big question is what's it going to cost to pave this driveway? That one, we're going to wait for quite a while because I'm sure it's a big number. There's something for you guys to do your math and kind of scratch your brain. How many linear feet do you think it is from the road, which is paved, and then I have is basically my driveway all the way to my barn. Do your best shot, leave a comment below, and the closest one to, I'll mail you guys a hat. All right, originally my solar panels were this direction, kind of facing a little bit more to the west, and when the tornado came, and damaged them. I took that opportunity, spent a little extra money, and I moved them over here. They're a little farther away, but they're facing south, and I could already tell how much more efficient that they are. And I had Eugenio come in. We put down this black paper. It's um, kind of a landscaping paper. I still need to get rock on it. I've just been so busy buying rock. I'm fed up to here buying rock for the pond and roads and ever, but it's never ending. But over my shoulder right there, there's the greenhouse and that's been put back together. And I'm gonna show you that too. Also, I'll show you how some of the trusses and stuff got bent, but with the plastic roof that went over it, the manufacturer says not a big deal. You can't even really tell. So thank goodness for that. And we'll show you that bit. So one of the things that blew, uh, the tornado blew out was this window. I had to take the brick off and everything drywall inside just to replace the window. So that's been done. Can't even tell that there was even a tornado here, but I have a little souvenir I want to show you, the mysterious light bulb. Okay, so here's one thing I don't want to get rid of is the light bulb that's wedged in there that came from my light fixture up there somewhere in the house. But my friend of mine came for the wedding we had like two weeks after the tornado hit. They showed that, they thought it was so cool. So they sent me a little gift. Here rests a testament to nature's unpredictable artistry. A light bulb perfectly nestled beneath this deck railing by the hands of a passing tornado on April 26, 2024. Proof that even in the midst of chaos, brilliance can find its place well written. You can tell I didn't write that. I just read it. You caught me. As you can see, I got new patio furniture because all my old stuff that was sitting out here went right through that sliding glass door. So what do you guys think of the new stuff? It's not as heavy duty, so if it might bounce off the house. The wife loves it and that's all important. Here, check out this. This does looks like tornado damage, but it's actually a construction site. We're building the pond, which we've been keeping you posted on. That's the water feature. The pond's not quite full. We're gonna get up to the top of the rock and we're waiting on that right now because I gotta get Eugenio over here to help me put my dock in and dig out more rock for a sandy beach. 
Okay, I want to show you guys something. After the tornado, we had record rains. We did have a little ditch over here. Guess what? This thing holds water better than anything. I now have a little pond, which is what I was kind of hoping for, but I didn't have to do anything to it. There's already about a thousand frogs live in there. So I'll probably clean this up, make it look a little bit nicer so it's not a swamp. This pond is right next to this real pretty pond, which I'm calling a swimming hole. Hey, why don't you guys get in? I'll take you down to the greenhouse. Isn't that a great feature? My wife didn't even know it did that. Because of all the rain and all the guys driving here with equipment and people working, I've had to bring in more gravel. It's like never ending, but it's starting to find its place pretty good. But now we got big equipment going on it. There are a few more ruts that we have to take care of, but that's the price you pay for a job site. So up here, you'll see the uh, school bus that we rebuilt. Kind of trying to sell it just because we don't use it. But what the heck, if I don't sell it, I'll just drive it in the town to get donuts every now and then. If I had an extra tree, I planted it. It's, I don't think it's gonna make it. It's like a Charlie Brown tree. So what I did too is I had all this leftover tarp. Remember the tarp that went in the ditch from my pond? Well, that thing was so big when they carved everything off and trimmed up the edges. I put it all down here, all the way around. And then I dumped a bunch of gravel. We got still a little bit more to go. I want this greenhouse area looking kind of nice and orderly. Got to get my son on board with that as well. So coming into the barn, we uh, had Eugenio. We replaced all these. They survived the tornado, but then the hailstorm hit uh, two months later. So what the tornado didn't damage, the hail did. You can see the barn's a little bit bent. You really, I don't know if you can pick up on it, but with the plastic roof, it just kind of sucks down and holds tight to these metal trusses. These are really bent up pretty bad. But if you stand in here and look, it's back to looking like a greenhouse because it didn't have any insurance for whatever reason. That's another story. It's still here and it only cost me a couple thousand bucks to put the new top back on it. And Eugenio did that in about two and a half hours. My son thought he could save some money and be a little one row farmer with this thing, whatever it is, it's too much work. So then I said, let's go to the Menards and pick up one of these. So we got the Benford 6000 Earthquake. Is that what that says? It is, it's an earthquake. You put that baby in and it tills up a lot of dirt. We got that going for us. Looks like we're growing grass and I don't know why. We're supposed to be growing something that you can eat. We need help on the greenhouse. Got any ideas? Tomatoes. Oop, I don't think that was supposed to happen. And I have found some cilantro. We are growing cilantro in here. Let me show where our cilantro is growing. Right here. Isn't that a perfect spot? Right under the water spout. So go figure, it's growing where it's not supposed to. Kind of like the hair in my ears. The next thing I want to do with this place is get it organized so I can come down here in the winter and have kind of a nice warm place to hang out. So I've got the patio furniture. Just got to clean it off, find the cushions. I'm going to clean this place up so it's kind of a little destination for me. Let me know what you think of that. And also let me know how come my kids aren't helping me. You know what? I know who eats grass. You're going to like this. Here's my best buddy. He loves this grass. Don't you, Ralph? Look what I got for you. Right out of my garden. What do you think? It's a pass. It's your favorite. I got, let me get a little, you don't eat dirt clods, do you? No? How you been, Ralph? Man, he's getting, he's getting his winter coat. Look at that, that is nice. Yeah, don't eat the dirt clods, Ralph. I don't think Flair's feeding you as good as me. Got it? Let me pull. Yep. Oh, there we go. He only has about three or four good teeth. Maybe that's the problem. Here, let me let me get the dirt clod off, Ralph. There you go, buddy. Now it's all for the eating. Huh? We still friends. The best part of Ralph, he lives in my backyard. And I don't have to feed him. Just grass every now and then. So I got a whole bunch more where that came from. Just let me know if you want some more, Ralph. You gonna get that down? You gotta make sure you chew all your food. Oops, you're gonna get a gut ache if you just swallow it. Hey buddies, tell everybody hi. See, I'll... who do you like more, better? Me or Flair, huh? Well, kind of like my prom date. He looks a lot better than my prom date. Okay, Ralphie, I'll be back for some more. You know where it came from. Here's one cool thing that the tornado left behind that nobody's done anything with. It took this huge, these are great big, um, 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 what kind of trees are they? Cottonwoods. So I think, I'm not a tree guy, but I, we have a lot of cottonwood trees around here in Nebraska. They grow fast and they get huge. So this thing just got bent all the way over and it kind of created a nice little bridge where Flair and I connect our property. So a few things need to be trimmed up like these, these things here. 
and uh, right under here, but it's still good enough where I can get my side-by-side -side through and continue feeding around. All right, let me take you around the greenhouse and show you where all the leftover pond liner is. Let me know if you need some. Come and get it. One thing I'm finding out is when you have land and you've got stuff, now I know why people never throw anything away because you always have a place to put it. But it's just sitting back here. It looks like crap. I can kind of see it from my house, so my wife's going to start giving me the business here real soon about getting rid of it. But I know I can use this somewhere. I just don't know when. And that's why it just sits here and takes up space. All right. So here we are at the chicken coop. Everything on the front looks fine. You can see a lot of the trees have been broken off. Those fell on the roof right in here. And then we've come in, put a whole new roof on, and I've saved that old sheet metal as well. Because remember, I got a place for that stuff. I'm gonna use it somewhere someday. But we've got plastic on it right now because winter's coming. And there's, there's Chicken Ed, he's our only rooster. We had about 30 some chickens and a few of the varmints around here have taken them out, plus, we had a couple of mean roosters. We took them out on our own. So, Ed, you better be nice. So, like I said, I think we said we're down to about 15 chickens. And that's the last guinea. We had three, and there's only one left. So, he has no buddies. I want to show you guys. I lit up all these trees one week before the tornado, and they're all the way around here. And when the tornado hit, all I could see is light bulbs in the ground because all the leaves and stuff like this are missing. But now they're starting to grow back and we've repositioned them and everything's looking good. So can't even hardly tell the tornado's been here unless you look around and see all these little brushes. Those are tree stumps that are starting to grow trees again. It's kind of crazy. Chickens love hanging out under there. Okay, here's the metal that came off the roof. My wife never really walks on this side, so shh, don't tell her that I'm storing it right here. She'll never know. Okay. All right, I love driving this thing. It gets a lot of miles just right around here. So here we are on the far east end, and this is another pad site that I will eventually build a home on someday. The views are really nice. Only down part is I got a straight shot at Flair's house thanks to the tornadoes. There was tons of trees, and now they're gone. Those will soon fill in, but they're pretty spectacular views. This is the other side. I have 20 acres. This is the other 10 acres, the other 10. As you can hear, there's stuff going on, and that is my new barn. The tornado didn't get that because it wasn't here. So there'll be a lot of videos coming up on that, so stay tuned on this entire barn build. We're gonna do a start to finish time lapse. It's gonna be awesome, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. I really appreciate you watching my videos. I'm Brad the Builder, and I'm gonna see you guys on the next job site.